You've seen amazing images on the web, where astronomers capture stunning galaxies and nebulae. And if you are in love with photography, you will love astrophotography even more. Explaining this hobby could take years, but I will try to break it down in this one video. To get you started in astrophotography. My name is Tim and this is AstroEdit. At this point, words like ISO, aperture, focal length and exposure time should better be familiar. We will build this knowledge on the base of photography. This hobby is all about preparation, equipment, precision and endurance. Your first tries might not work and setbacks are happening on a regular basis. Getting outside in a cold night is definitely a challenge, but as soon as the first image is in, you will definitely be hooked. Let's start with the first piece of equipment. The minimum I recommend is a DSLR, manual mode, shutter cable or internal shutter control. Forget about auto mode, it's complete garbage. You need to take exposures in the range of 1 minute to 5 minutes at a rather high ISO to capture those really dark targets. The typical ISO of an exposure in DSLR astrophotography is about 800 to 1600. And most importantly, there are many exposures. You will not be done by taking just one image of the galaxy. It won't be enough. The camera doesn't have to be anything special. Full frame or APS-C, Canon, Nikon, Sony, mostly everything is fine, if you can shoot in a RAW and manual control. There is a complete other topic regarding DSLRs, which is called the Astro Modification, but it is really only important if you want to dive deep into this hobby and learn as much as you can. I already have a video about that topic, it may be a tiny bit trashy regarding the quality, but this information was already very valuable to many people. You want best results, of course. Important, fast optics, prime focal length, manual focus. You want to use autofocus? Forget about it. Depending on the target, you may think that you'll need gigantic telephoto lenses for this hobby. If you want to go for these teeny tiny galaxies, yes, that's true. But in many cases, 300 millimeters are already enough to capture beautiful nebulae and gigantic galaxies. If you want something really short, wide field lenses are great as well to capture amazing images of our own galaxy. And if you want something in between, a 50mm prime can be used to capture bigger structures like constellations or expanded nebulae. Does it have to be a prime lens? Not really, no. It works, but for best results I really recommend a prime lens. More on that in the topic about stacking. If you already checked out some other astrophotographers, you might have seen gigantic telescopes on gigantic tripod mounts. These telescopes are made to capture the night sky in absolute perfection. At some point the lens will not be attached to the camera, but the camera to the lens. If you just want to try out this hobby, you don't need a gigantic refractor telescope. Just go for a basic, maybe 300 prime lens. Autofocus? Hell no. Manual focus is the only way to get the stars pinpoint sharp. With a DSLR, bump up the ISO and try to focus on a bright star. You might have to take multiple longer exposures to dial these settings in. With a good lens and DSLR, you can also try to focus in the live view, zooming in digitally 10 times. In astrophotography, there are many tools to fine-tune the focus to perfection. But that's really only necessary if you have a dedicated setup. As I said, the typical exposure in this hobby is about a minute. At this rate, a basic tripod will not be enough. The night sky is moving slowly, and you want these stars to be tiny little dots and not streaks of color. Welcome to the universe of tracking mounts. Your camera and lens will be attached to the mount head, and as the exposure is running, the whole thing will follow the night sky slowly. These tracking mounts come in all different sizes, shapes and price ranges. Let me introduce just a few of them, from basic to advanced. Most of the time you have to escape the city lights to get under dark skies. With a basic DSLR and lens you will not need big tracking mounts. With lightweight equipment you might not even need battery powered mounts. 
A new and more or less popular mechanical tracking mount is the Omegon Mini Track. It can handle a standard DSLR and 300mm lens. Perfect for grab and go or landscape Milky Way photography, or maybe some first tries at deep sky imaging. This small thing can be placed on any sturdy tripod and will follow the sky for a full hour. Experience rating beginner. If you want to go a step further, try the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. It can handle heavier cameras and lenses, and with an optional counterweight, even a small telescope. It is better recharged and needs a rather solid tripod. Similar products are the iOptron Sky Tracker or its big brother, the Sky Guider Pro. Experience rating rather interested beginner. If you already enjoyed some of the above and want to dive deeper into tracking and maybe even guiding, look at these. The following mounts can handle a camera and a big telescope are heavy and controlled via a hand controller. They offer automatic target finding, called slowing, for both axes and a so-called auto-guide input. Auto-guiding is a method to improve the tracking of the mount and is generally needed if you take longer exposures at long focal lengths. They work with power cables, counterweights, polar alignment scopes and are not very portable. If you want a mount of this size, you might want to control it via PC and the camera along with it. A true legend within the Hall of Fame of tracking mounts is the Skywatcher HEQ5. It's the only mount I've been using so far and will give you awesome results. It will handle big refractor telescopes, can be controlled by a laptop, can use auto-guiding and can be modified to improve this perfection even more. It's like your favorite 7 year old video game. Other popular brands are Meet or iOptron. They offer comparable mounts in all price ranges. With mounts like these, you can get amazing images of all deep sky targets. But you will be bound to your backyard or weekends gun camping. Experience level? Hell yeah! If you are bound to your backyard and you can travel to dark skies on a regular basis, welcome to my life. Many of us astrophotographers are imaging from the city or the suburbs. Due to all the light pollution, we have to tune our equipment accordingly. A small thing that will greatly improve the quality of your images is a filter. It's not that practical with a camera and lens, but really powerful with a refractor telescope. The most basic filters are light pollution filters. They help to reduce the negative impact of artificial light. A very popular brand is Astronomic. They produce good quality filters, which can be clipped into the body of a DSLR. Sorry Nikon users, most of these are made for Canon only. Other popular brands are for example Beta, Optolong or Eidos. These filters are either clipped into the camera body or screwed into the optical train somewhere between the telescope and camera. You've been out there, you've taken many images of your target and now it's time to create this final image. Your individual subs will be stacked to improve the quality a lot. A popular software, mostly because it's free, is called Deep Sky Stacker. This program will load your images, called light frames, and stack them. Remember, your images must be raw. But while using this program, you might see that you can not only load your light frames, but also something else. These other frames are called correction frames. They will improve the final result by cleaning up the light frames. Experienced photographers might already be familiar with dark frames, but there are more. The light frames will be corrected, also called calibrated, with dark frames, bias frames and flat frames. Explaining all of these could take ages. I already have a video on the topic, go check it out, to learn about the perfection of calibration. And just to complete the loop, a prime lens will create the best results, and one of these calibration frames, the flat frame, will depend on it. This is the home stretch, literally. Deep Sky Stacker will produce an image in the TIFF format. This image needs to be edited with software to actually make anything visible. It's not photoshopping, it's the art of image processing. There's an abundance of tutorials, workflows, tips and tricks out there, from simple to completely nuts. I have some of them, check them out and I will recommend some other tutorials not only for Photoshop but also GIMP and the dedicated softwares APP and Pixinsight. One eternity later. Thank you for sticking with me until the end. You are now prepared to take amazing images of deep space objects. But what exactly is up there? You can search for objects and plan your imaging nights with an online planetarium, such as Stellarium. 
Do that right now, and in the meantime, I will list some beginner friendly targets. Andromeda Galaxy. Very bright, very big, awesome to look at with only 300 millimeters. The Orion Nebula. Insanely bright, insanely beautiful, very easy to find. The Pleiades. Beautiful blue glow, easy to find, stunning every time. The Horsehead Nebula. Very popular, very easy to find, may need a bit of dedication, but will silence anyone who wants you to become a lawyer. And for the Southern Hemisphere we have the Magellanic Clouds, the Carina Nebula and most of the above. There is nothing ordinary about astrophotography. Your first nights will be depressing, complete failures, freezing cold, with no result. That's the point where the few people who actually love the night sky will endure and try again and again. The result will be amazing images of our universe and the only things you need is a camera and a lens. Join us, Backyard Deep Sky Astrophotographers. Or take a lightweight equipment under the next dark sky and enjoy the magical experience that is astrophotography. Do what your heart desires, with a little help from people like me. I share my journey through this hobby here on YouTube. If you want more, subscribe to this channel and let me know what you want to know. My name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.